Three Fit Heads. Today we talk with Lee Drybaugh. He is the chief evangelist for SciFox, which is a company that's making what I talk about all the time that should happen, a sensor on you that measures a bunch of stuff, not just glucose, not just ketones, that hormones. Now, I, I want to know my cortisol. How stressed am I? How much inflammation do I have? They are working towards a future where we can see all of the things on a continuous graph. Though currently yeah, they're one... doing blood tests at home. And there's he talks thing... about having a device at home, like a whole lab at your house that is just a small device where you put your blood into it. But in the past, it was a whole laboratory that would it would take to get the same data. Anyway. There's one thing you need. It's more graphs in your life, <laughs> Allie. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, there was a lot of like we always say you can't you can't which what is it you you got to measure first cut later cut second is that what twice, it is twice twi- two cuts <laughs> you can't get gains unless you're writing down your lift numbers uh okay so and it sounds like based on this intro that we would dive right in and talk about the device that is not what happened we talk about what health is we talk about the human condition of deciding between good choices and delicious cereal. We we get into philosophy about how long we truly do want to live. It, it is a fantastic romp with three <laughs> that brilliant people. I had a great time. Romp. Welcome to Total Fitness. Serious fitness for not so serious people. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Welcome. Hi, Ali. That was a very quick welcome. Uh, pleased to be <laughs> we gotta here. we got to get to Look it. we got to deliver for the audience. <laughs> okay. So it's midnight here, so hopefully I'll adjust to your energy. I normally I mean, be going to... You've got great lighting for midnight. Uh, it's software. <laughs> <laughs> the future is now. It can be any time. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll take a okay. sip of tea. Is that caffeinated? Tell me you're not having caffeinated. Uh, It's actually cup number four because I should have been in bed 20 minutes ago. Don't worry about me. I like wrecking my chronobiology and then talking about health, lecturing others. Yeah, how important is recovery and sleep? Eh. Yeah, it was was quite interesting. Um, Ten days ago, I was writing about longevity and sleep. And yet I was sitting up at 3 a.m., (laughs) <laughs> to get it completed on time, drinking red wine to calm my nerves and pissed offness, physically writing, avoid alcohol six hours before bed, etc. Stick to a routine. And I tell you, there's a lot of people in the health and longevity space who, how could I put it? It is their career working on how to make people live longer and healthier. And they may even practice it by day, but hedonism kicks in at midnight. You know, the 12 to 2 run. (laughs) And let me, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but years ago when I started taking longevity supplements and increasing my uh, NAD, for one, I soon realized that you could drink a lot more alcohol, like substantially more. So it's it's, it's an interesting Did you get less drunk or just less uh, ill effects? Not that. Uh, You'd recover. You get less ill effects if you primed yourself the night before. And when you woke up in the morning, you could recover much sharply. And during the drinking, you could definitely go further. So, you know, I (laughs) honestly, it's a little bit embarrassing how much I I was spending on longevity supplements. And, you know, it became this facility to to drink extra. I'll just put it down to Scottish heritage. Not that I'm advocating... uh, uh, alcohol moderation, one drink per day, mm-hmm. yada yada. Hey, this was say years ago. You know, thirty I'm minutes. No, I'm Did you say one drink for thirty minutes? No, per day. I hope I said. Oh, I hope my I subconscious heard. didn't didn't speak. So you're saying you cured a hangover by increasing uh, NAD? Ah, uh, uh, yes. If you, if, new yeah, 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 yeah. I you could actually. I found. I discovered a whole longevity stack that works perfectly for that misuse go on but but listen it's like um it's like it's like celebrities getting infusions also to cover that 
you know, high dosage uh, intravenous vitamin C, etc. They there is yeah, various concoctions they use to to cure it. It's banana bag. <laughs> First of all, I'm a celebrity and I've tried this and it does not work. The the intravenous stuff was not a success for me. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Uh, I've not I've not tried it for those activities. Mm-hmm. I only see what what actually happened. So I don't feel as guilty. <laughs> is I I, so I I I could be here all night labeling uh, this, but I'll try and keep it short. But I, I, at a certain point, I realized the body is a platform, and uh, things like food are actually bundles of code. So if you eat an apple, it's executed in a body platform. And I didn't have other people to execute code on. Um, so it was like, hey, I've only got this platform. And some of the things I want to do are will shorten your life and bring you age-related diseases quicker. And I thought, well, I want the data. I want to see. Other people said it was actually a way of getting the pleasures I wanted. And so I did do experiments that made me significantly younger. I did do experiments that made me older. And uh, one of the experiments was uh, low consumption of alcohol, which I must say significantly reduced my blood sugars. So if you were only measuring long-term blood sugar, HbA1c, uh, a lot of daily wine did make that go down. So I'm not saying consume lots of wine to make your blood sugars go down. I am definitely not saying that. I was just saying this is how I ended up there. For the noble goal of ex- science, I was doing it for the science is the short. For the data. Many years ago. Mm-hmm. Data mining. And now I drink tea, okay? <laughs> so you've reversed your age. and I have. I have. I have. Uh, very... Uh, in significant ways, for example, uh, I think the a, a, a way I one age reversal I like because people do. Am I like I don't know if I'm allowed saying bullshit. People do a lot of bullshit age reversals. Uh, so one I liked and would stand by is uh, elongating, lengthening telomeres. So I'm sure we've all heard of telomeres and okay, and so. Uh, there is agents that you can take. I can name them and all that. And yeah, they'll lengthen telomeres. They're not cheap. And so I took um, an agent called TA65 and took it for 12 months. It cost $200 a month. And I measured with lifelength.com. There's only two places in the world that measure telomeres properly for, for this type of experiment. Lifelength is also who Liz Parrish used for her when, you know, she's the first person in the world who uh, did gene therapy on herself. And so I measured a year apart and I actually went backwards in time by telomere length by 18 months. But that was over a year. So it's t- it's uh, a year on top of that. So it's almost, um, you know, we're looking at, what, two years and eight, eight months uh, reversal in that time using uh, an Ayurvedic um, herb, but specially compounded. Did you feel better or was it only a test that told you that? Well, I must admit, I was doing a lot of other things. So I was feeling quite good. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you don't want... It's not your overall telomere length that you should be concerned about. It's a number of critically short telomeres. So you might have uh, overall a good telomere length, like as a mean or an average. But in your liver, say, you might have some critically short telomeres. And then, you know, you're going to end up with cancer of the liver uh, when they go. Uh, when uh, So it's like the weakest that. link when it comes to telomeres. Yeah. Yeah, and I like, yeah, and I like, so I, so I increased the critically short one. So I'm, I'm keeping away the likes of cancer and maybe I'm jumping too far ahead. But one thing that's stood out to me is everybody has a weakest link. And so what I've never understood is why are you not being uh, continually scanned to find your weakest link? Look, you're, you're going to, we're all going to die. Okay. 
And okay, you know that's what? surprising coming from you. Yeah, yeah. And so why are machines not in computation not working to find proactively your weakest link? I mean, the thing that's going to kill you, it doesn't matter if you're getting prostate cancer, but most men are, by the way, or have prostate cancer, cancering away, if cardiovascular disease is going to take you out five times quicker. And so why can't we just focus in on your, yeah, your, where your weakest link is? The majority of people, bus, obviously, sure. a bus, yeah. Yeah, I bike too much. If you did a scan of me, it'd be like, yeah, you're not going to get cancer. Bus. <laughs> bus. <laughs> anyway, go on. Yeah, so I, 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 again, I can divert into many, many tales, but I wanted healthcare is not proactive. I think we, 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 right, we, totally. we agree on that. And even when it does get what we'll call proactive, like you have something, I wouldn't necessarily agree with all the choices being made, and I'll leave it at that. And so the only person who's going to take care of you is you. But luckily, we're moving into a new world. I mean, there's there's something new beginning to emerge, and it's actually what I like about Cyfox, actually. They're, I think they're going to be a key enabler. Uh, but you can't take control unless you have, I'll say the word data, or maybe information. So you need, um, ac you, you have a minimum you need access to your own body data. And so I see Cyfox enabling that world. And again, there's various body data, but we're, we're quite missold today when it comes to body data. And I don't know if you have sponsors and so on. So I don't want to say, hey, <laughs> DNA, t DNA tests are bad. And then you're Fine. like, well, a sponsor, 23 and me. <laughs> yeah, so I, there's a lot of mis-selling in the market. Specifically uh, DNA tests, happy. you say? I don't find much utility in them. And but listen, I I was hesitant to say that, but I know I okay. I know senior people in in industry, senior people, and they don't they don't they vehemently agree with me in private, even if mm. their companies are in that space. And I'll leave it leave it there. I have my I, whole. Well, let's genome not leave it. Okay. Do you think okay. it's because DNA doesn't have that information for us, or that we're not there yet with interpreting and actually making sense of the data or co even collecting the right data? Well, you know, there was this notion, notion, God, time passes quickly. I remember when, when it was all the rage, uh, your genetics are your destiny. You know, we're talking 20 plus years ago or yeah, around that then. And it was believed, you know, one gene, one disease. Uh, but that's not been found to be true with the research that came later. Uh, it's not one gene, one disease. Uh, there is maybe 80 diseases more obscure that go that way. Um, and so your genes are definitely not your destiny. Um, and genes need the what the field that's really taken over is epigenetics, uh, whether genes get expressed or not. And epigenetics uh, are uh, your interface to your environment. So really what governs your gene expression? You might, you know, there's a classic, you know, your genes uh, kind of load the chamber, but they don't pull the trigger. The trigger is, you know, smoking tobacco every day and having high stress and uh, feeling socially isolated and not getting enough UV and getting blue light at midnight, you know, et cetera. So uh, your health is this interwovenness of, epigenetics, genetics, lifestyle, behavior, uh, and also your thoughts and your social relations. And actually, I see people, I don't think I should name them, but they're, they're like I, where I was 10 years ago, like living in labs, micro-controlling every behavior, hoping to keep their heartbeat going a little bit longer. I mean, like if they can extend their days. But life isn't just keeping uh, a pulse. And now I'm living in Slovenia. I have nice visits to Croatian coast. I get to go to Florence in Italy. And then you start seeing, no, I don't think I have to go to bed at midnight. It might be quite pleasant to eat past, uh, pasta at midnight. 
in certain little Italian towns in Florence and a slight overconsumption of red wine at the same time. You know, life has to be lived also. So it's something I'm, you know, I've, I've relaxed significantly on. And now I see other people trying to micro control. And yeah, I do lifestyle behaviors. I also see have a, I would say, an effect on blood chemistry that is not ideal. It's, but I want to at least have a choice and an awareness. I don't want to be uh, blindly shopping and consuming and giving myself a multi-decade suicide because Kellogg's uh, has sponsored a commercial. I want to see, you know, I want some choice in my own ruination. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier. You think ruination is inevitable, <clears throat> so getting there needs to be your choices. I definitely want to be fully informed, and I don't want uh, outside agents like healthcare accelerating my demise. Fair. You know, I've got some. Uh, you, you you show first signs of diabetes. What happens? They're trying to put insulin into you, which in, um, accelerates your demise uh, along that trajectory. They're not saying, hey, try a food as medicine intervention like a ketogenic diet or try fasting, uh, get your fat below your personal fat threshold and, and mechanisms to restore metabolic health, like ketosis, for example. You know, people in the early stages of diabetes the majority in the early stages can reverse it uh, through lifestyle. That's one example. Uh, but by the way, all the chronic diseases have the same root. You know, they're only called different diseases. So you get, um, let, I'll just put it down to, I'll call it historical, that we give them different names and we have different pills and procedures for each chronic disease and each chronic disease is a billion dollar industry uh, but they all share the same root for the most part all, and that's we'll, we'll call it metabolic disruption to be simple i mean we're hearing more and more of this like they're calling alzheimer's type 3 diabetes yeah and they wasted a decade or more in vast sums um chasing the amyloid model of alzheimer's Alzheimer's is, uh, yeah, an interesting disease. But uh, you, you'll know the work of Dale Bredesen with his Recode protocol, maybe. He would be an excellent guest for you. But again, it all comes down to the same stuff of lifestyle. And talking of lifestyle, uh, I, you know, the podcast is called Fit Heads. Exercise, mm -hmm. uh, proper exercise, I don't mean... Um, a 30 minute walk every day uh, but proper exercise resistance training uh, cardiovascular lift heavy things in a week uh, that will destroy every longevity supplement out there to be clear i'm not yeah. sure if people are aware of that because i see people online like uh worrying did i buy the right nicotinamide riboside and what was the purity of it and how many grams and it's like do you get off your armchair? Do you lift? <laughs> and you know, right. that kind of, so it's like you're spent, they don't seem to realize you'll get more of a NAD boost from exercise. Plus exercise has a lot more positive effects, but I think people just want to buy things in capsule form on a subscription and sit in a chair still. And then there are plenty of people that want to sell those capsules and right. continue the subscription. So it makes sense. Partly the reason I go into this area, I mean, there's many reasons it all came together quite some time ago, but one was because um, I helped a friend start a supplement brand. He actually ended up, he began as a teenager, which was amazing. He now has a number of brands. He does very well, it's pan-European. And uh, I was watching him magically sell uh, sell shit to people. <laughs> and he was sourcing from China, sticking EU labels on it because there's some, you know, I don't know what the law is, but you can ship in from China, mix it together, and now it's EU. Mm -hmm. And he, he was banging out, like, gels. And I'm thinking, to my, you know, these sugar gels for and calling it endurance. 
And he was doing the whole marketing to people. And I'm thinking, damn, you're sending people on a diabetic path, on a real sugar roller coaster with these gels. This is, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. And he would, he also, um, he also worked with the athletes and these athletes were injecting testosterone, growth hormone, other agents. And I, I would question him and he would say, well, at least they're exercising, they're drinking plenty of water. What's better, this or the people who go to the bar each night and just drink beer and don't exercise? And I, I did wonder, but I did then begin to wonder, how do you quantify fitness? Because these people may think that they're healthy because of exercise. And then I noticed people are over-exercising. And I think, and then I thought you're actually accelerating aging. You could see on many of the athletes, athletes don't have a long life statistically, neither do bodybuilders. And so I, I got interested in how do you actually know what is healthy in terms of exercise? And that led me on quite a path and led me to biological age quite early. It seems that looking hot and living long are at odds. <laughs> Yeah, I want to kind of do both. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, It'll just let me... In 80. <laughs> I certainly don't want to be bored. Let's put it that way. And I definitely don't want to be sitting... Personally, I've been there and I don't want to be there again. I do not want to be measuring grams of broccoli per day and trying to only live on the most... Um, how could I put it, nutrient-dense foods. I do think we should be aiming for nutrient-dense foods, and I definitely do not think we should be eating uh, processed foods. Just, But I'm, 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 I'm currently not doing calorie restriction. And I'm oh, not... right. The, like, eating really low calories will make you, is probably the number one thing to make you live way longer, right? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. But you're miserable. Yeah, that's Cert so certainly people report um, like an, an emotion. Well, for example, Brian Johnson has been promoting it and he says he feels the best ever. I don't know how for how long other people report um, like a dullness, a lack of emotion. Um, so, yeah, yeah maybe I'll try it. A lack point. of pasta. Ugh. A lack of pasta. When, you, when so you're then, looking at these things and someone's se selling you on something, how long do you tr how long do you try it for, or how long would you suggest someone try something? Because honestly, when people are selling you stuff, they're you know they're selling you magic beans or they're selling you the secret to life, and you don't you don't really know unless you do it. But how long would you give something a, a try? Yeah, it depends what it is. So, for example, this uh, TA sixty five formulation. Obviously, I went for it for one year, but I had a lot of trust because I knew a scientist who invented it. Um, I went on experiments, again, in the long distant past, which involved, and I do not recommend it, which involved eat, eating like eight Snickers at a time, mm. uh, multiple times per day. I have went through periods where you pretty much live on McDonald's and I, I hate McDonald's and I basically I cured myself of fatty liver and then I wanted to see if I could give myself fatty liver <laughs> uh, wow. and I did that I did that backwards and forwards multiple times. Uh, That's crazy. But you have it's hard when you've only got one subject. Now I'm a bit embarrassed about it, but when you've only got one subject, you know, it's just you you just have to run the same experiment multiple times on yourself. I wouldn't mind uh, subjects also to test on, but I, I don't really get volunteers of, hey, can Convince we Max. fatty, <laughs> can, can, can we give you fatty liver? I mean, Build you said Snicker Snickers diet. and he, <laughs> he perked up. I like Snickers. What was, what was the impetus behind the eight Snicker a meal diet? Oh, I was seeing, first of all, there was a few things I was testing, but a some of it was towards seeing if I could rapidly gain weight and if I could re-give myself fatty liver. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to see um, how much overall I would destroy my um, glucose response, if I could begin showing signs of insulin resistance and how long that would take. 
I don't mean deep insulin resistance, but I mean the first signs of it. And what did you discover? It was half a Snickers and then you're done. Uh, what, yeah, good question. What did I discover? Basically, if you eat bad, you end up with bad blood chemistry and you end up with your metabolic markers going down. And if you keep doing it, you get fatter. And if you keep doing it, you start having fatty liver. Hmm. Uh, I don't think I'll win a Nobel uh, science prize for this. Well, next time we'll look at Twix and then uh, yeah. Milky yeah. Way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Listen, like I, we... I, sorry, Ali. No, go ahead. I don't know. I just, this life, you've got like 28,000 days on Earth, say. And oh, for I me, hate it, when you put it like that. Ugh. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, half of mine are gone, uh, more than half. And at least for me, it's a puzzle. It's just a puzzle. Every day I wake up, I'm like, I don't, I don't get this living on a rock that's hurtling through space. And then all the things that apes called humans do in theater and the clothes and protocols. And so the only thing that seems to help me get by and figure things out is experimentation. And yeah, when I was much younger, it wasn't food. It was other things. Uh, but I must admit the experiments are pretty easy nowadays. Uh, so at the moment I'm measuring inflammation, uh, using multiple markers, uh, and making pretty easy going lifestyle changes. And, and have you been able to bring it down? We, we, well, I'll back up a bit. So. People, as you'll be aware, one thing I find interesting is, like, if I may mention, Cyfox, for its members, uh, started offering CGMs at cost, so $120. Libra, the latest one. The, the, and the thing is, I cannot believe the popularity in the States of CGMs. I, people just I'm seem to love... two sensors right now. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I remember in 2016, um, someone at the Human, Long uh, Human Longevity Incorporated said, CGMs are going to be a game changer. And I remember thinking, I'm super bored. I only want to use one for two weeks. After two weeks, I know pretty much everything I'm going to know. And so you only need the two weeks with one sensor. And for example, with the sensor, I learned, hey, white fish is very bad for me. Um, it really sets up for a long time, and that's all I learned, but that's all I was going to learn. And so I'm um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bored of the glucose thing. And so I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in inflammation. And Cyfox, which we haven't mentioned, they're building, working on the ultimate wearable, and it does, will do continuous glucose, hormones, and inflammation. But the most popular measure of inflammation, inflammation is C-reactive protein, CRP. But that's a really crud one that your doctor gives you. It's, it's basically you're half in the grave when it registers something, like a lot of things when you go to the doctors. Um, and so the better version of that is HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. It costs, I don't know, three, four times more to do, but it's still cheap. And so Cyfox, um planned that in their wearable, which will be super nice, because you'll be able to see when you have, um, well, you'll be able to see how your lifestyle is impacting your inflammation. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, I keep mine, try and keep mine low. That is one thing I try and keep low. So it, it was a 0.8. Uh, it was a, um, no, it was a 0.6 and I, 0.4 and I saw it go up to 0.8. And then I'm like, something is going on here. Doctors don't like HSCRP because you s it could be an infection. But if it's not an infection, something's going wrong, but it doesn't tell you where or what. And doctors only like data that they can act on. They're told only to take data they can act on. So it jumped by 0 0.4. I had an intuition, we'll call it, that it was dentistry. I went to the dentist. They took an x-ray, said it was a pocket of inflammation in a gum. You can't see it on the outside. I got an operation like scalpel, 
uh, they took away the pocket of inflammation, tested a month later back to 0 0.4. Because you don't want long-term chronic inflammation. Uh, that's definitely, I don't mind playing with my sugars, but I generally, I'm not going to live in a, keep the inflammation very high for Isn't a long time. Lifting heavy is playing with inflammation though, right? Yeah, but that's, uh, that has a hormetic response. So if you lift heavy, exercise hard, you get that sudden burst of, uh, inflammation. But when it comes back down again, it settles down lower than where you began, so to speak. Ideally. Or put it this way. It, it, yes, if you exercise well, yes, you'll get spikes of inflammation. But the overall trend will be to reduce your inflammation, yeah. giving you less overall. So you want... So, you, you... Go ahead. Oh, no, please. I'll take a sip of tea. <laughs> well, when you're seeing this inflammation on a graph... I just want to know what it's like visually. I know on a, my glucose, you know, will go up and down and I'll see it very in a short period of time, make a lot of changes mm -hmm. depending upon what I eat. Is it less dramatic with inflammation where it's um, like it going day yeah, by day? Yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's yeah. It's it's uh, a much slower wave day by day. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely I something I uh, would want to keep track of. And um, yeah, I, I was looking at some data today on the American population, and I was shocked by uh, the average CRP levels across the nation. I mean, it's it's alarming, and you should be bringing it down. I mean, if you see it high, you should be proactively uh, doing everything you can to get that down. I mean, I'm shocked that people are – no wonder – I wonder if people are are getting age-related diseases quicker. As you'll know, aging is a cause of the great majority of disease, the number one cause. So you don't want to get there quicker because your cancer goes up exponentially and along with every other disease. So you don't want to, you definitely don't want to accel be accelerating your aging. I, I'm surprised that lifestyles that people are living are, vastly putting pressure on our bodies uh well to have an accelerated aging there and people don't even have the right nutrition to have the basics to not accelerate their aging for example most people are zinc and magnesium deficient these two uh minerals are needed um i mean you don't have them in sufficient quantity which the majority of people do not for a whole multitude of reasons, uh, yeah, your aging is accelerated. But some people have too much. I know somebody uh, who has I, too much zinc, and it's like it, it needs to be personalized, right? I, I have I maybe I could be the case with zinc, certainly not magnesium. But the thing is, um, I don't know if they've been taking supplementation because. You get what's called a mineral wheel, so you can see which uh, micronutrient impacts which other micronutrients. So, for example, when it's zinc, it displaces copper, and copper displaces zinc. So they should be taken in a 20 to 1 ratio. So if you take 20 milligram of zinc, you should have 1 uh, milligram of copper. So I don't know if that person had been doing something strange in their diet. A big problem nowadays is that people buy supplements which have got they're multivitamin or multimineral. There are these compounded things, like they've got lots of things added in them. And manufacturers take whatever is cheap and throw it in and then give it a brand name like it does something fancy sometimes. Cardiovascular protection. No, they just got some, they're just throwing what's cheap. It's like they throw in iron, but iron accelerates your aging. So lack of uh, magnesium, and zinc accelerates your aging, whereas uh, iron uh, accelerates your aging for most people. The only people who need iron are are going to be menopausal uh, women at certain periods. They don't want to have anemia. Everybody else should be dropping the iron. And, and so you measure that with ferritin, which, by the way, Cyfox already have in their hardware. And having a, they also have in their finger prick kit that they sell today. So they have ferritin, they have um, HSCRP, they also have insulin. 
that's another thing, if I may mention, I don't mean to go too heavy into all these biomarkers, but let me mention one more thing. Um, I see people wearing these CGMs and you can tell I'm kind of troubled by, by it. Um, but you're, when you're on, on the, the trajectory towards diabetes, you've got 10, 15 years where your uh, insulin is going up, but your glucose is staying stable. And so it takes 10, 15 years before this, is, this hand being insulin, before your glucose begins rising with it. So for that 10, 15 years, you're like, oh, I, I'm so healthy. I've got 80, I've got 90. But you're not. You're actually he heading fast down a disease trajectory. And so you need to measure insulin also. And it's a relationship between the two I look at. In fact, I could mention more because I believe everybody should do something what's called a craft assay. And that's where you take multiple measurements of your glucose and insulin in response to, uh, to taking glucose. And those multiple measurements when graphed will place you exactly where you are uh, in terms of insulin resistance and where you're moving on a diabetic front. Is it a question of testing too much, testing the wrong things? Not testing often enough, looking at the wrong factors. What's what's going on here? Well, I've been I been I think I've been in the industry a long time, so I think I I'm warranted in, in what I'm about to say. But everybody wants to sell you their angle in the jigsaw, but it's one connected picture. You know, it's one person will try and tell you it's all glucose. A person who sells two markers will try and tell you it's these two. And everybody may even be speaking the truth, but it's their lens. But it's a connected system. You really need to think holistically. So if I may say, um, I studied functional medicine for five years. And the reason I did that was because I started listening to functional medicine practitioners. And I'd never even heard of functional medicine because that's an American thing. Um, but once I came across it, I'm like, hey, that's cool. So you spend time with the patient and you try and work out the root cause of their illness. Um, and you try and cure it. You know, they may need uh, methylation uh, supplementation because they have a, an SNP defect. Uh, they may have heavy metal exposure and need um, so, some work to dump heavy metals. And so, yeah, don't suppress the symptoms. But I began listening to these protocols using functional medicine to cure people at root cause, or at least that's how it's sold. And I thought, why don't I just apply that now? Like when I'm well, just apply the protocol. So keep trying to get heavy metal, keep heavy metals out of the body or and dump the ones, aid the ones which are in the body to get out of the body. And check my guts for gut dysbiosis and check yeah look at my microbiome and check if there's a good uh diversity of flora uh base and check my cortisol response over 24 hours and i just went through every functional medicine protocol and test i i spent five years in a blood lab also doing standard blood chemistry tests and everything but then i moved on to the functional medicine test and just ran them on myself and um, yeah, so I, I never understood this test when you're sick. I mean, and also it's not good data when you're sick. I want to know what is my, say, testosterone. By the way, that's in the Cyfox thing. Uh, I want to know what is my testosterone now and what was it five years ago. Uh, I want to know what it is every month, actually. And then I have something to go back to. If I may want, may one day want bioidentical um, hormones, for example, at least give me my own personal baseline to get back to a certain age. Give me my own snapshots. Oh, right. Because your snapshot is different. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because they'll just pick a range. And often it's of a sick population, by the way, like two standard deviations of the average of sick um, and, and set you there. Uh, I'm not very keen on them. And by the way, um, I all I the reason I ended up at the lab was because um, I originally um, uh, this is long before Dave Asprey and Keto and Verta Health and all these um, 
I went, walked in a lab, blood lab one day and yeah, I was told, you oh, you're diabetic. And I thought, no, that's not me. I mean, I don't know. I just had this identity crisis. They said, book an appointment at the diabetic clinic. And I just, I, for reasons I can explain, should you wish, but I just had this identity, like, I, that's not me. And so with a computer science background, I sat and within two months had cured it. And by the way, just on the subject, of, since a fitness podcast, I got a full deck and things when I started. You know, I obviously, I, cause I want, because I went extreme. This is where the whole programmatic thing went. When I heard, hey, maybe go reduce carbs up fat, I just went all fat. I don't advise anyone to do that. But the I went down to 3.5% body fat from 19%. And within four months, I'd put on I'd put on fifteen pounds of muscle, and the sports professor who was measuring me with DEXA would not accept to this day that I wasn't injecting testosterone during that mm. time. <laughs> and part of the part of the kidding. reason I, yeah, part of the reason I believe I was able to was is because um, my cholesterol was high. And hmm. cholesterol, we end up in all in all these myths. So my cholesterol was super high, but I find that when my cholesterol is high, my testosterone is very high. It's actually off the charts high. Uh, it's off the lab range high by quite a bit uh, when my cholesterol is very high. And so I was very worried, and my cholesterol is high when I'm, when I'm personally on a high-fat diet. And so I was worried, hey, I'm going to die of a heart disease. And so then I got into high resolution analysis of lipids and so forth. But I deduced that my cholesterol was wonderful. Uh, it, it wasn't the kind that's, I'm worried, is going to give me cardiovascular risk. And that's the thing. LDL is good when it's good. HDL is good when it's good. LDL is bad when it's bad. And HDL is bad when it's bad. You can't make that split. Oddly enough, it's just to sell... I need to watch what I say here. Let's just say um, you need to be a bit better informed than just LDL is bad and HDL is good. I say it again, HDL can be too high and LDL can be like 300 and it's still a very poor independent risk marker for cardiovascular disease. So let me be clear on that. LDL even up to 300 can be a poor is a poor independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. A better marker, by the way, is APOEB. And that's, as an independent marker, that's also in the, in, in the CIFOX kit. Yeah, we hear more and more that the things that we're looking at are not actually the indicators that are that's going to help get the answer. Uh, let's just say um, testing is used to do a lot of dispensary. You know, I come, the value is two, or you get this. Oh, the value is four, you get this prescription. Uh, so just say that testing is the front end to wild term sales. So I definitely, um, yeah, I, I think it's in everyone's best interest to learn as much as I can about their markers, their body, and yeah, cliche, but take control of their health. But I'm quite excited about where we're going on that front, by the way, because uh, as we said at the beginning, healthcare is reactive, it's passive, it waits for you to fall off the cliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a new sector set to emerge. There isn't, um, it doesn't fit within the existing sector, but the sector of healthcare that's missing that is, it is emerging. I see it. Um, it's predictive, you know, computationally. It looks to optimize your health, you know, keep you living longer, look for your weakest links. Uh, so predictive, it's preventative. Uh, you know, three pillars, really, prediction, prevention, and optimization. And it's being enabled not by healthcare. It's being enabled by computer science. So it's been enabled by computer science moving towards healthcare, which sounds nuts. Again, I'll repeat it. This new healthcare sector that's missing is becoming a reality slowly through computer science moving towards health and wellness, quantifying what health is, what wellness is, 
what longevity is and we're beginning to be able to know at the molecular level what changes of or you know instead of waiting until you're let let me be rough here shitting blood to know you've got colorectal cancer it, you you the machines pick up in the cloud hey is molecular changes taking place here are typical of, of heading towards some cancerous state and then you can start taking plans to head them off right, I, the plans are the important part and then convincing the person that they should stop eating five snickers because they just want to live their life I think what will end up happening, because people are quite apathetic about their own health, I think what will end up happening is the machines will trigger and then it will be a case of maybe getting referred and, hey, take this, take take that. I think where we're heading to, I coined wellness as a service. Because I think where we're going is you'll pay like nine ninety nine a month and the cloud will take care of you. You'll have your own like avatar being run in the cloud of your physiology. And you'll check in with measurements to resync it. And so you're just going to pay $9.99 and it's just going to take care of you. Like try and head off your weakest link, optimize your health, uh, make predictions. Because as you age, you're going to need different things. For example, as you age, you'll need more protein to head off sarcopenia. So well, I'll have all the modeling in place that incorporates what happens as humans age. Also to facilitate you not dying. You have to have computing working. Computing should be working for you to stop you dying constantly. Like we have a what people wear wearables today, and it's kind of relative to junk. You read real, yeah, popular again. I see Ali. We we must have cloud computing running, and you must be paying for it to be working constantly to try and head off disease for you specifically and to make recommendations. It's very rudimentary what we have today. I'm not very impressed with what we have, but I do see a future ahead that is, is, is emerging. Yeah, the difference between you slept like crap and <laughs> here's what you should do to sleep better tomorrow. But even then, there's still another step where you go, yeah, but I'm just going to live my life and do a podcast at midnight and have some tea. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, and machines are going to have to account for that. That's a whole uh, behavioral health, and uh, yeah, what human. It, it, what I find really dumb is if you look around for health advice, it's always hey, eat plenty of fruit and veg, uh, maybe do a bit of fasting, uh, maybe eat some superfoods, sleep better. It's just repeated on every health and wellness website for eternity. I'm amazed we've, I hope chat GPT just eats all of that because we don't need people writing anymore. It's not adding to the conversation. People will read it, but don't do it. So that's the whole behavior um, side of things and behavioral health. I do think that people will continue um, being hedonistic and yeah, pleasure seeking. And, and maybe machines will learn to help with, uh, people in the behavioral sense, you know, the gamification and so on and neuroscience yeah. etc right i mean certainly a segment of the population will just do what they're told to live as long as possible but then once what you're talking about is ubiquitous there it becomes a choice of you know this specific thing could take two days off your life and you're like that's fine i'm going to enjoy this thing how crazy will that moment be? Well, if you look at the American guidelines for a healthy lifestyle, I think it's like three and a half percent of the population actually follows them, all of them. And then like uh, yeah. the two thirds of Americans are have um, they're diabetic. They're on a diabetic journey. They just don't know it. They're either diabetic or they're advanced on diabetic. They have insulin resistance, at least two thirds of americans it's uh so yeah well the sensor i was showing you by the way is not a glucose sensor it shows me my ketones in real time what are your thoughts on that oh uh, no way i yeah. where did you where did you get that from ali i don't know overseas i just put whatever in my body it's fine <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm testing it out other companies working on it they launched on indiegogo they're 300% funded and yeah here you can look right now what am I at please 
It, the company's called Sea Joy because I couldn't think of it. I'm at point two. Sea Joy sounds rude. Let, uh, what value do you have there? Can I have a look at that? Currently point two. My I was I was in I was getting up there earlier today, but back down. Yeah, you're not in um, a deep ketosis, shall we say? No, not at all. I did have pasta last night. Yeah, and by the way, when I see people measuring uh, their ketones, um, I've been in situations where I saw ketones very high, and I can say what the situations are, and um, and they've also got what I would call fairly high glucose. Mm -hmm. So not, and, not GKI ketosis. Uh, yes, exactly. And so I will see such people taking ketone esters or swallowing more coconut yeah. butter, trying to get their ketones even higher. And actually ketones, we should be cycling in out of ketosis. Um, evolutionary speaking, I mean, you cycling in out of ketosis is one of the number one things you can do to live longer and healthier. But I see people trying to force up the ketones and then they've got high blood sugar too. And actually, it's a total energy also will shorten your life. You want the total energy combined between the two to be below a certain range. Above a oh, certain range, which I've calculated, also starts killing you. And so, um, yeah. Above above Would, a certain kills you too? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I've definitely... Or, I mean, below. Mind. No, I would think that below your... would just put you into survival mode. Yeah, kind of, actually, yeah, yeah. So it's above. It's when you add up your Sorry, total okay. glucose and add up your total ketones. And so I see people posting online certain glucose and ketones, and I look at the, add them up. And I'm like, damn, I think you're causing yourself injury. I mean, trying to force them up. Fasting mm -hmm. is a great way. Fasting. Again, there's an exception there, but fasting is a pretty safe method to get your ketones up without relying on third party products. Yeah, 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 it does. Everybody That's why wants the want subscription it. pill. Yeah. Not stopping eating. Yeah. Interesting. So, I, yeah, I look at it like my body is a filter, and the more I put through the filter, the older and crappier the filter is going to get. And it, it just seems like the less I've put in probably better off i am which sucks because putting stuff in feels great <laughs> uh i i will i'll try not to blush to that comment <laughs> i mean uh, pasta. We'll, <laughs> we'll keep on the nutritional and drink front so when it comes to uh i think that's very um wise to say that ali because that is also my understanding the less you put in the longer you'll live well, I did want to bring back this because earlier you said food is just code, right? And so that kind of makes you think, well, there's good code and bad code. Are there foods that have only good code or is it a combination of both for everything that you're eating? What do you think? So it's good that you mentioned that because uh, one of my early understandings, I'm never sure how far to go back in time. So it's, <laughs> it's a bit awkward for me. So early, we'll call it, 10 years ago, um, is that food is certainly Americans, if I may stereotype culturally, classically have viewed food as fuel and then have even been proud of how fast can they fuel up. Like I even bought this sandwich at the subway at the gas station and drove eating a sandwich. They're not thinking <laughs> that the stress of driving stops nutrient absorption properly. And then you see Italians who take four hours out to eat yeah. a little snack together. It's just a completely different experience. And so food is more than fuel. It's uh, it's signaling information. And so, um, yeah, and if I may say it while we're on that topic, and I guess you've had many other guests saying it, is avoid sugar, refined sugars, that's a given, especially fructose. Fructose does more damage than any other sugar uh definitely i see ali looking at me and i um, think it's not in every single product that they sell. <laughs> oh yeah e great. even even bread but avoid non-natural fats that is just wicked and if you combine refined sugars and well vegetable oils people confuse that with olive oil no i'm meaning industrial seed oils uh, if you combine sugar and industrial seed oils, you're bringing yourself cellular mayhem. I And what I cannot believe is 
what people feed their children often that I see. For breakfast, it's like break your fast to have the low fat yogurt and the white bread and the orange juice. And by the way, all fruit juice is destructive. Fruit juice isn't going to do anything for you except give you diabetes. Well, once you, once you remove the fiber, it's an evil product. And they give and they think that they're giving their children a healthy breakfast. And in the States, I see these breakfast cereals that are just horrendous desserts or like Delicious. desserts on steroids. Yes. It's like, my God, how to how how could you give your children diabetes any quicker? And don't forget, once you've got di <laughs> no. once you've got diabetes, you've got cardiovascular disease. It's just if you hasn't been diagnosed, it's just missed up, not diagnosed. It's there. The two go hand in hand. And so I'm really shocked. At, yeah, what, what I see, what I see taking place. But the thing is, broccoli doesn't have um, a big um, advertising campaign. I guess well, it doesn't have a big marketing budget. Gross. <laughs> it's a hard sell. Yeah, but as you'll know, and I, I'm struggling with this myself, by the way, um, because when lockdown happened, my gym got closed. I used to do Thai boxing five days a week. I put on 20 kilo, we'll roughly call that 40 pounds. And I haven't lost it. And part of it is because my girlfriend, when I was staying home over lockdown, I just started eating whatever she made. I used to be keto before. And now it's very, very hard to go backwards because your taste changes. You really do have to go through like a, a few weeks suffering. Really? But then you get to the point where you think broccoli is the best tasting thing you've ever had. <laughs> but the period in between of changing your taste buds is pretty rough and now i know there's two in the future when we have all of the answers via data there still will be two inputs in and the one is the screen that says to you do this thing that will help you live forever and feel awesome and the other input is what cereal tastes like and i feel like humans are gonna go with the second input every time no matter how good our data is can i run some an idea past you tell me what you think Yes, um, there was a paper published last year and it suggested that your food choices could add 13 years to your life. If you had an app that told you what to eat every day to get those 13 years, would you follow the app? I have one. I programmed it in a spreadsheet and I eat the same thing every day. So, yes. Okay. But I'm special. I, I feel like that's not a normal human action and there are certainly days where i'm not listening to the app oh, are you saying i fully I, commit to the that, app and it's either on or off this is binary decision uh, no, i either no, live not quite, more years fo or follow I... most of the time would you be willing to try it oh if we're 80 20 it and i'm drunk on the weekend sure yeah it would have to be some sort of a counter where like it's like your your bank account so it's you have 13 years and then you, you have a beer and that's like 12 years, eight months. And then you read a broccoli. It's like, oh, back to 12 years, nine months. And that I think that would be really yeah, enticing. Yeah. This is why we would, would quite like, like it. Yeah. The, it had a clock or something that you were always trying to defy. Memento Mori. It's also <laughs> reminding you of your demise. So you better live, you better live right now. Oh no. Screw broccoli. Well, <laughs> my clock says I'm going to die. I better enjoy my life. <laughs> yeah, that's a, what's been on my mind lately because Brian Johnson, you know, he sold his company, what was it, Braintree, um, for 800 million. And I contacted him in 2015 and tried to get him on what we'll call the biohacking side of things um, and to come to my event and be a speaker because his new company kernel is working on a brain human interface and I wanted him to talk. Um, and now I see he's all over, uh, podcasts and so on because he's spending 2 million a year self testing and doing yeah, biohacking. Uh, biohacking is actually just preventative medicine. I mean, <laughs> that's all it is. Um, <laughs> and it. so, um, so I saw him, everywhere lately uh just going uh extreme um but he goes to bed at the same time every night which is gives you a better sleep score and he sleeps alone and if that makes good for him 
and he feels better and that's what he wants to do that's fantastic and also we all have periods in our life be it months or years or a decade where we live a certain way and then you know you might be the greatest health nut for 10 years and then an alcoholic after a divorce for five years people's life have certain cycles and periods and I, i'm not to judge anyone so he's going to bed at this time has a, an eight sleep mattress you know gets up in the morning has a blue light in front of him and doesn't sleep with his wife or girlfriend i don't know his status but i know he has a partner <laughs> and uh whereas I get into bed and I have this rescue dog from Spain, um, a Spanish uh, Ibiza hound. And I don't know what it is with this breed, but he wants to lie on my ankles. I think it's so he knows I'm not leaving. <laughs> and he's 35 kilos, so call it over 70 pounds. And he lies hard on my ankles and he only sleeps like that. I think it's because he knows if he lies on my ankles, I'm not leaving. So now he can fall into a deep sleep. And he wakes me multiple times a night because of this. Mm -hmm. My back hurts because I can't turn because he's trapped me by my own angles. <laughs> and I, my sleep gets wrecked every night. But I say to myself, my God, I love this dog. It warms my heart. It gives me purpose in life. And yeah, I'm going to have a wrecked sleep score. An accelerated aging as a result. But hey, I'm, 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 I'm going to accept this cost. I think you've stumbled onto the girlfriend paradox. <laughs> yeah, so my girlfriend complains she doesn't get a good sleep in the same bed. So that's like in the three of us in the bed all getting disrupted sleep. Yeah. But the dog is happy. <laughs> <laughs> See, by the way, man. we're getting a little uh, heading towards a philosophy here. So I'll, I'll bring it up. But for decades, I've been um, yeah, wondering many things, one of which persistently is what is health? And I haven't stopped studying. You know, and the other day, it was at the thermodynamic level. You know, it's this law of entropy. And we'll say expressed in the second law of thermodynamics. And so we you know, I, I study the breakdown of the body. I've been reading 70 biogerontology papers in April. Quite depressing, I must say, when you can detail what is taking place. And so, you know, I'm really interested where this entropy is coming from, like the source of the entropy. But, you know, I, I don't see myself getting there and figuring it out. I'll just have to park it as a, as a life wonder. But I do think of breakthroughs in physics will end up cat will quantum biology will end up um will end up with medicine that you just cannot foresee today i'll, I'll leave it there i gotta i gotta stick around to see that i better extend my life so i don't miss it would you want so, to live forever ali now we're getting into things i would like to be healthy for as long as I choose. I want it to be up to me. Would you extend your lifespan if you knew you had health? Yes, no question. How, 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 how old, if I may ask? Uh, right now, I want to still be alive. So ask me later if I still want to be alive, and it, we'll see. But it's probably a yes. Max? How do you know? I mean, sure, I'd love to... I think I'd love to live for 500 years, but I've never tried it. I don't, uh, let's make it a thousand, make it 10,000. I don't know. I could be pretty good at piano. Yeah. I just need more time. Uh, someone else presented this in a, in the question in a different way where it was like, if you woke up and today realized that your birth papers were wrong and actually you're only five that makes sense no actually you're 90 and you didn't know it and you're gonna die very soon would you want to extend life of course because you're healthy and you feel great and you would like to continue living so it's really not about the age yeah so uh health um you know to throw fancy words at is a ability to maintain 
um, the homeodynamic space. I mean, and all that means is you have a your your body responds to stressors which are bombarded with all the time, be it like exogenous, like toxins, um, pathogens, and internally um, going on. And its ability to maintain a homeostasis. You'll know it like thermal regulation when your heart comes down, comes back down. When you take too much sugar, your your glucose comes down. So the maintenance of that space is your health, and it's I'll, I'll call it a matrix. And so, for example, hormesis, like giving yourself stress, like exercise, eh, helps retain that space, that dimension. Uh, but obviously, I'm saying the law of entropy is coming in and um, reducing that homeodynamic space, that buffering flexibility. So health is that buffer against those stressors. And the list of stressors is super amazing, but uh, I'll leave it here. Um, and so, yeah, exercise is good for that, but the Gatorade is not. So when I see fit heads, I'm like, okay, the run on treadmills, tick. They take Gatorade, bad. <laughs> Or yeah. am I stereotyping fit heads? Oh, I would like you to, because I don't know who we are. Tell us who we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, okay, as long as we're talking philosophy and how, right, we're trying to make these good choices to extend the life. And we're talking about converting people to these good choices, right? Uh, when they talk about creating a startup, you want to make a painkiller, not a vitamin. Nobody wants the vitamins. They want to stop the pain. That startup will be at 100x startup and the the vitamins won't take off. So I think mm -hmm. these sensors right now are vitamins because we know it's what we should do. But to to get a painkiller, to allow me to eat pasta, to allow me to eat as though I'm going to get diabetes, but stop me from getting diabetes. That, I think, there's your 100x startup, whatever. That is what the future of health will be if there is one that really moves an entire population to be healthier. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, that that is difficult. And uh, in the past, I worked with and have been around startups that were very much focused on health optimization. And I can tell you now, the amount of, the lack of uh, traction, for, people just were not interested in their health until they were sick or unhappy or feeling mm -hmm. miserable. It's actually how I fell into health. Could I actually mention that just briefly? Sure. Please. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll make it short. I can tell 50 stories, but I'll, I'll keep this one super simple. I, my youngest daughter was two and a half. And I remember it as clear as can be. I went running after her. I remember which street I was in, the weather, everything. And I was out of breath within 20 seconds. So I had this physical disability. And uh, not to be able to play with your own kid. Um... Yeah, that, that was a shock. But let me add this. A year later, I could run an hour and not even break a sweat. Like, literally not break a sweat. Get bored running for an hour. I turned it around. Uh, but that scared the hell out of me. I got to tell you, I get bored running for a minute. So, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Good <laughs> on you. Well, that must have yeah. been your wake-up call. Right, it was I... one of it, it was one of them because I grew up uh, in a family with sickness all around me, and uh, I mean severe sickness it ultimately led to um, deaths. And uh, I was always healthy, and that's why I said when I got that diabetes, I'm like, I just had this. That's not me. And uh, you see uh, what happened. And, and so what I noticed from a young age about ill health is it's not life and it's not death. It's uh, something that straddles in between the two, which is the worst of both positions. It's kind of a living death. And so I realized, well, you know, if you've got toothache, you'd give away all your money to get rid of the damn thing. And that's just toothache. 
And so, um, yeah, and then I, I'll say that um, at once my parents died of cancer, both, um, yeah, I had a few years out, we'll call it that, I can go into more details, but, well, let's just say I couldn't get off the sofa, that type of years out. And uh, after three years, I wanted to start back. Um, and I just don't want to go back to technology again. And so um, one of the things, which I think was quite smart, was I said, I spent, let's just say I couldn't figure out, and I can go into details of why I couldn't figure out, but the bottom line was I said, look, I don't know what I want to do, but I know whatever I want to do requires health. Health is the foundation of the pyramid. So what I'll do is I'll focus on health uh, as a career. And then if I see something higher up Maslow's pyramid, you know, self-realization, blah, 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 Wi-Fi, whatever. No, it goes below health. Um, then I'll do that. But the thing is, I've just stayed at the bottom of the pyramid the whole time. Because health is so interesting. Because first of all, we artificially separate mind from body. And we separate people from their environment. And health today doesn't look at what we might term in positive psychology flourishing, or we call optimal health. It doesn't. It doesn't view health as a as a, as a spectrum, and that bothers me. So you know, I'm I I worry. I look, wonder what entropy is, but I also wonder, going the other way, what is possible? And I think that something of a higher order could be possible. Some like sort of health has to be moving this health yeah we yeah Mental, we physical. we have this spectrum and i think we could move the needle in the opposite direction but still a dog on your feet we'll call it positive health um yeah. but no I, I i like five dogs on my feet <laughs> well this has been fascinating way deeper than i expected love it <laughs> Where can the fit heads learn more about C Fox? Cyfox. Cyfox, so, I'm so sorry. Yeah, just oh no problems. So Cyfox stands for silicon photonics. Oh. So, Cy silicon silicon photonics is where you use present day semiconductor manufacturing to produce photonics. The, today the chip industry and the photonics industry are separate, but it's projected that the chip industry, the semiconductor industry, will eat the photonics industry. And the the CEO of Cyfox, um, Diedrich, uh, it was his department at university, again, that invented the silicon photonic biosensor. And I'm sure we all can know what a biosensor is. And so when you do what chips do, chips miniaturize and chips lower cost. I'm sure we've all heard of Moore's Law. And so the... Um, the plans for Cyfox, which I was in disbelief or had some cynicism to start with, was to drop the cost of testing by 100, which is crazy because a 10 exchange is crazy. So, and I thought, no, you're crazy. And he said, cut the size by 100. And I'm like, nah, this is hyperbolic. This is bullshit. <laughs> and my God. They had no marketing, and that's what made me begin to realize they were credible that they didn't have any marketing hires. I had 19 PhDs. Uh, let's just say I've, in fact, actually at the health conference, they demonstrated the silicon photonic biosensor working for HSCRP. They demonstrated it working for um, APOEB. It says they've got many more biomarkers multiplexed onto the unit. The hardware will become available this year. So if people go to cyfox.com, that's S-I-P-H-O-X, health.com, so S-I-P-H-O-X, cyfox, uh, health.com, there is a wait list there. In fact, go to cyfoxhealth.com slash wait list, and you can sign up and get notified, uh, or just sign up for the regular newsletter, and I'm sure it'll get sent. But it would be useful if you tick what is you're waiting on. But the cell is 17 biomarker kit, today, but that biomarker kit, the cell today, is the cheapest way to get 17 crit critical biomarkers. Uh, so uh, the ha this kit today 
gets posted to your home, you put a few drops of blood onto a single card and you post it back, postage is included. You get 17 biomarkers, including insulin and the other markers I mentioned, like testosterone. It is the cheapest, again, I'll stress in North America. I know the costs involved. I think the nearest equivalent is like $500 at LabCorp. Um, and what this is doing is it's allowing SciFox to see which markers are changing monthly and to build up a customer base in advance, an email list for when the hardware becomes available. When the hardware becomes available, uh, you'll be able to get lab quality results at home in under five minutes. This is a game changer. N leaving alone size and cost, these the hardware they don't plan to sell. The pl current plans are subscription. So you pay a certain subscription and now you have a device in your home that is tiny and yet it's equivalent of huge lab machines and it's given you FDA approved once to get FDA approval uh, until an investigational device. You'll get lab quality results in your home of these markers, which have never been possible. You can't measure HSCRP at home today, like inflammation. I mean, I see people offering CRP in kits and devices, but it's just regular CRP, which is pretty junky. Um, you can, uh, they've got insulin working also. Insulin is an amazing measure, but they're also, Diedrich, the CEO, he believes uh, that everyone will be wearing a silicon photonic biosensor uh, to measure hormones, inflammation, glucose, etc. And every home will have biosensors. And, so, and Cyfox have a multi-year lead in the space. Check it out, there's no competition. Uh, his department invented the, the biosensor and that ties in there is a respected household name i can't mention but they put in a seven figure sum into the series a which recently closed so a respected household name you can maybe begin guessing who it is because and that should be in the news i'm hoping next week and so that lens I think has to lend credibility uh, when that's in the use because I think it'll make tech crunch and things. But until we have the home device, it's a finger prick kit. And um, I asked before I came on with you if you could give a code to your audience, and and they said, yeah, sure, um, twenty percent. Use a code at checkout of Fit Heads, right? Yeah. You can Fantastic. put that in the show notes and mention it. And I don't know if you. We just mentioned uh, it right now. Good job. Oh, it's <laughs> Got it. I, I did it myself. So, yeah, it's uh, t uh, 20% off. And that's pretty cool, by the way, because if you click to become a member, the you can get a CGM. I, what I'm told is cost 120. The 20% is off everything in the basket. So that'll make it, what, 97? And it's not yeah. bad. Awesome. Well, thank you for thank that. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and this has been illuminating. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, uh, Ali and Max. Thank you for uh, inviting me. And thank you to the Fitheads. If you can rate and review on Apple Podcasts, that helps us out a whole lot. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>